What's going on YouTube? Ali Dope checking in once again, yes sir, with another YouTube video, man. Today, you already know, it's quick little tip Tuesday for you, man. So we're just gonna go over five tips that's gonna help you make your designs pop, man. Without further ado, we're just gonna hop into it. I don't wanna do too much of the chit chat, patty whack. Let's hop into the computer, man. All right, YouTube, we're just gonna hop right into the screen. As you can see, this is a collage that we already had. But yeah, pretty much the first tip is gonna be, you gotta use your camera raw filter, man. I'm gonna show y'all just a quick way how to use your camera raw filter. I want this to be as quick as possible. So in order to use the camera raw filter, you go to filter, and it's right there with the rest of the other filters. I feel like a lot of people underutilize it. Um, as far as like graphics go but it can really like take your design to the next level i'm gonna just do some drastic stuff just so you guys know so like this is like some final touches like you add some final touches or this could be as you're editing some of the photos to add to the to your like manipulation or whatever you're trying to create so boom first off off rip it's pretty much just like lightroom like you can make the adjustments with the exposure you can make the exposure the contrast like and it will affect the whole thing entirely I think the, the place I like the most on here, if, if you add detail, you can even make it really sharp. That noise will make it nice and smooth, as you can see in my forehead. When you adjust the noise reduction, it's there. It just pretty much smooths out all the noise in it. Same thing with the color, you feel me? So that's cool. I'm gonna just keep it like that, keep it nice and smooth. It gives you nice, like a nice smooth overlay. Now, color mixer, color grader. You can end up changing any of these colors. So blue's the main image in here. So I can make all the blues purple. You feel me? Green. You feel me? I can go and turn all the purples like blue. All the reds. I can make them, you know, a different color. But we can go back. All right. Color grading. Same thing. Like calibration. Like the shadow shift. Make everything a different color, saturation, red, green, you feel me? So, and that's cool like it is. Boom, effects, color grade, I think All right, the main thing I wanted to show was the highlights. So you made the highlights green, right? Make the, change the luminosity in it. Boom, like that, blending. Turn that blending all the way up. Turn the balance off if I really want to, like that. Boom, make the shadows, if it's green, make the shadows red or something like. It just takes your images to the next level. So you do with this information as you may. Midtone, same thing. You can just create a whole new image based on a uh, camera raw filter. So that's pretty much it for the camera raw filter. All right, the next one, we're gonna use adjustment layers. So have you seen um, when I did the adjustment layers on uh, this little Uzi, if you've seen the final speed art, it ended up being like a purple like type of speed art. But I'm gonna show you what the, like this was it when I finished. When I added all my adjustments and added everything, and this was like the raw photo, all you gotta do is go in there and add some adjustments, right? So adjustment layers are here. Now most people use uh, like select or inverse and they do image adjustments and then those adjustments permanently go inside of the image so you can't go back and fix anything you can't mask anything it just leaves you with not a lot to manipulate what i tell people to do is for instance i'm gonna turn on some of these filters boom all right so i use a gradient fill i love a gradient fill uh gradient fill adjustment layers so boom i'm gonna just turn them all on just so you guys can see you see how that makes a difference? I, I added three different gradient layers and it, it just brings all the colors together. I end up throwing on some other highlights and stuff like that. But this is what is cool about the adjustment layers. It's its own layer, so it already has a mask. So if I didn't want all this pink stuff here, uh, I'm gonna use this one. I could just go in there and go in there and paint on the actual mask, right? If I wanted to, I could just make him, you know, just his face, just make him stand out. Everything else would be purple type stuff. 
You feel me? So that's pretty much easy. I think everybody knows that, but filters, man. Like if I want him to just do like that and everything else to be nice and colored, I could do that. If I wanted to keep that and I just wanted to bring it down a little bit, I could. If I wanted to bring it all the way up, I could. Bring it down and then you find a nice little mix, right? So with these, just so you guys can see what they do, you got exposure, vibrance, color lookup table. I feel like people don't use that. You can invert, like just creating an inverted layer. Like, like I said, you could paint right on the layer. You feel me? Make it purple, make it green. That's the, I think the, the key about it. And the adjustments are right here or they're right here at the bottom. Photo filters, channel mixers, black and white, color balance, lookup tables. You could load your, your LUTs from Premiere and stuff like that on your images on Photoshop. They have a few already here. Uh, let me just go with horror blue. See, you just add that, boom, edgy amber. You feel me? They already have a few already in there. Soft look doesn't do too much. Tension green. You hear me? So, two strip, uh, what they got? Fuji, you feel me? They got a bunch. And you can add your own. Once again, like I said, you guys can add your guys' own uh, filters in there from, from your LUTs. So I really just am adamant about using adjustment layers. Next, we're gonna move on to creating great shadows and great highlights. All right, once again, adjustment layers. This is pretty much the raw version of, uh, of this image before I started adding all the good stuff. But if I wanted to get real freaky, you would go in there and use the burn and dodge tool. I really, I hardly ever use the burn and dodge tool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it a stack with y'all. I usually use uh, blend if, and I use uh, just coloring, like just regular solid layer and color on it. Burn tool, rasterize that real quick. Once again, I always be like, don't rasterize the layers. But as you can see, it's adding a nice shadow in there, right? Based on your exposure. Now you can do your midtones, highlight shadows. So we're working on shadows now. So I'll probably bring the exposure up a little bit to like 80. And there we go. If I want to make his face like a, the dark side of the moon, since all this light is coming from this side, and I really just want to make him all the way dark, I could do that with the shadows. You feel me? Burning the shadows. Gonna minus that. All right, shadows, midtones, same thing. It's a little bit lighter, as you guys can see. I want you guys to see it directly on the face. Midtones. Feel me? And you could burn the highlights so it's not as strong. So you just gotta work and see what works for you. This one gives like a lighter, a lighter shade. I kind of like it. Okay, boom. That was the burn tool. And as you can see, the burn tool slightly darkens areas in the image. You feel me? Dodge if you want to highlight something. So this is the dodge tool. The dodge tool is it lightens areas in the image. So if you want to create some nice highlights in the midtone, stuff like that, keep the exposure fairly low. So if I wanted to bright up his face based on the shadows, boom, I could. I could light up this whole thing. I can, it could be a light show on all on this side. Boom, if I really wanted to. You see how it affects it? And that's just the midtones. That's just a quick way. And again, I would do that on a, another layer. I wouldn't do it right strictly on the layer. I always tell people to non-destructive editing. All right, bet. Midtones, you could do it to the highlights. Boom, brighten up his highlights. Look at that. If you turn your exposure up, it makes it even stronger. Feel me? Same thing with the shadows. Boom, it's not too light. Boom, gotta clear exposure down. Shadows, I'd have to see, bring back all that, all the darkness. Boom, all the adjustments that I just made. So if I made adjustments and it was mad dark throughout the whole image, I can bring back all them highlights. And that's how to use the 
burn and dodge tool with the shadows and the highlights just so y'all can kind of see what's going on and how it be done sometimes all right you guys so we're gonna do a real live uh so you guys can see in real time because i want to show you guys how to use the match color tool and i want to show you guys how to use the blend if i think those are key tools to use when you're creating uh photo manipulations in any other capacities so this is just a picture of polo g we're gonna keep it pretty simple and we got this picture of polo g right there we got a picture of some sort of desert in the background doesn't mean anything like i said i'm just trying to show you guys what's up probably move polo g down a little bit so his things i don't know like i said not trying to think too much about it first things first we have to match these two colors so boom click this one image adjustments match color okay boom down here you go to source the title of the document and then you go to layer in this case you wouldn't want a background because the background is just going to be black it's going to be the layer that you have underneath your polo g layer boom and it gives me like this weird colors but as you can see the colors are pretty much like map map mapping up or whatever so you can either neutralize them feel me but you got to adjust them the luminance is too high color intensity too high want to make a thing fade it a little bit there you go this fade is going to adjust how strong it is so boom probably make it something like this like nice and light boom color intensity there you go and that brings back the saturation of it you can even make it like black and white which is no and then this one i kind of like this color it's low light but not too light the luminance as you can see it's gonna make it too bright or too dark we just want it right in the middle right now it looks like he out there and that's a quick adjustment you don't have to do too much gradient maps and stuff like that so you do the match color like that now for this you would create a new layer a solid layer boom now i tell people to use the solid layer the color that you're going to blend is the color that you want to pick so in this case i'm gonna use red because i want you guys to see the difference but i would normally use white or something like that for a highlight so i'm gonna just use red here create a clipping mask after you create your solid layer, create the clipping mask, put it on there. Double click on the image. As you can see, it's just this red space. Boom. Now people ask you what you do. I'm using red because that's the color I cho chose for this particular one. But like I told y'all, it could be gray. You feel me? Like that. Boom. Look at all this adjustment. And that's just a slight adjustment. Like... Look at how you're doing the highlights. Maybe you want more in the, you feel me? It just depends what you're going for. You just got to play with it. Boom. And that's just moving the toggles up and down. Now, if you want to get fancy, you press Alt and click this here, and it'll separate it. And that's how you're getting the, uh, that separation of uh, the highlights and the shadows. Then you can move it all the way over like that. Bada boom, bada bing. Try to get that redness all around. If you want, you can play with the red too. Adjustments if you don't want it too red. Stuff like that. Bomb. Still shape it out. Same thing. Keep it how it is. Boom. So after you do that, press Command, Control I to invert the whole layer. Right? And then you just paint on it, man. Paint on it on white. We're going to go a soft brush. And like I said, you just click on it, boom, look, and then you can see, now you can bring some of the red back, you feel me? Not even too crazy. And it gives you like a nice separation between them, you feel me? So it's not so harsh overall. So people normally do this for like highlights and stuff like that. I don't really care. You can do a red inside the arm, red here. It just depends what you're what you're doing for in design. But I just want y'all to know the blend is tool is definitely a tool that you need to practice and explore. You feel me? So boom. And from there, still, if I wanted to, because it's an adjustment layer, you can click and I could change the color to white. I don't like it. I can change the color to yellow. I don't like it. I could change the color to the color of the background. You hear me? So boom, and I'm just gonna be fancy and add one of my adjustment layers on over here. You could do it up here or you could do it down here. 
gradient map, whatever. Let me just show y'all color lookup table. Once again, two strip. Then you could just slide down what you what you might like. Boom. Crisp, warm look. And that's just like quick. And like I said, if you really don't even like it like that, take it, thing, move some of the adjustments inside the chest. Boom. Clear, clear it out. No, nothing on the polo G. Boom, like that. Bomb. There you go. Adjustment layer. Brightness contrast, you feel me? Bring the brightness down a little bit. There you go. Bump with the contrast. Boom, bring the, bring the, bring it down a little bit. There we go. Well, yeah, that was it, man. Try to keep it short, keep it simple for you. Use some of them tips. Let me know if it helped in the comments below. Y'all know, y'all already know how I go, man. Keep creating, keep hustling, most importantly, keep learning. And until next time, I'll be dope checking out. Yes, sir.